we are run by programs 95% of our day. Does that mean that we are operating in 5% capacity? Right. Well, we're basically, what, that's another area that we now understand, um, which is that in general, you know, the way that the subconscious works, and, and when we talk about consciousness in this regard, we're talking about different aspects of one consciousness, you know, what conscious mind, subconscious mind. The conscious mind is really who you are in terms of your ability to make creative creative decisions and creativity. The subconscious mind is basically a very elegant and functional recording system. Its language is feelings. So in other words, what happens is when something happens out in front of you, your mind, your subconscious mind looks at how it makes you feel. And it correlates the two together. And then it stores that information. So in other words, if some particular situation makes you stressed, like getting up in front of people and talking, the subconscious mind says, you know, whenever this, when, and you repeat that, the subconscious mind hab habitualizes that behavior. And so it says, well, whenever this, this opportunity comes up, he wants to feel, he or she wants to feel stressed and scared. That's because the subconscious mind assumes that everything you're telling it is the truth. And it's interpreting what you're telling it by how it makes you feel. So, you know, I've told this story many times, but I had, I had somebody one time in a coaching call that said they didn't believe that. They thought that I am thinking all of my thoughts. I make my thoughts and I'm thinking my thoughts. And so to make a point with them, I just said, did I tell you to talk? I don't think I told you to talk. I said, you need to just sit there with your mouth shut until I tell you to talk. And of course the guy got insulted. And I said, you see, there's a perfect example. I said, I knew that you had a file in your head and your subconscious that says, when someone talks to me this way and makes me feel this way, then my, re my reaction should be this particular reaction. I said, which is what you're feeling right now. I said, you didn't decide to feel that way. It just happened to you. And he's, he said, you know, thank you for the awakening. He said, I, I totally understand now <laughs> what you're saying. He said, because I didn't make a decision and I would rather not feel this way. And I said, that's right. I said, see, you are being manipulated all day long by whatever's happening outside of you. Somebody says something nice, you feel happy. Somebody says something not nice, you don't feel happy. You feel angry, you feel sad. You're subconscious, make me feel stressed over this and it obeys. I said, it's not analytical, it's not creative, it doesn't have a sense of humor. When, something, when it sees you behaving in a certain way and reacting in a certain way, it doesn't say, well, I know he doesn't really wanna feel this way or she doesn't really wanna feel this way, so I'm not actually gonna write that program. It just sees what you do and it writes the program. And now that becomes part of your personality. And that's what they mean when they say, 95% of the day, when the, nor, uh, the nor, neurologists say, or the neuroscientists say that 95% of our day, we're not actually creatively thinking, we're running programs. The programs are just running all the time. And that has, that's the reason why I called the, on the last book, I said, you know, it's just a thought. It was like a play on words. It's a lot more than just a thought. And the subtitle was, emotional freedom through deliberate thinking and that's what we don't do most of us don't think deliberately we don't create a thought as i said earlier of our thoughts we don't pay attention to how we react to our thoughts the thoughts happen we react and we're in the reaction we're in the emotional content we feel all of it we don't we completely surrender to the situation and we think that that's conscious living and it isn't. It's you know we're basically just it's a, a puppet being a, to whatever's like being going a slave on to your reactions. Now, this is, isn't it. It's like being slave to your reactions. What whatever happening is happening from the inside. Absolutely, absolutely. We are a slave to our reactions, unless, the, and this is the value of a, med, a simple meditation that teaches you thought awareness. And you know, like uh, you don't want to use like a guided meditation because that's asking you to think. What you want is something like a simple breath meditation or a simple mantra meditation where you give your, you give your mind a single task and you, you tell your mind, I want you to watch my body breathe. That's what I want you to do. Or I want you to 
repeat this phrase, this simple three word phrase in my head. This is what I want you to do. And then you sit there and you wait, which takes about 10 seconds if it takes that long. And your mind says, this is boring. I'm going to go solve a problem because the mind is a problem solving machine and that's what it does. And it takes off to go find something, to think about something in the future um, or something you did yesterday or said yesterday that you wish you hadn't. And when it does that, your consciousness goes with it. Uh, you're, no, you're no longer the observer. You're in the experience. Whatever the, the mind is experiencing, you're in that experience. And, and that's being in the thought. And what happens is when you meditate like this, there's a period after the mind takes off where you wake up. And you wake up and you notice. Now you're in the observer because you're noticing. You notice that your mind has taken you off of the task. The mind has left and it's thinking about something other than what you and your will told it to do. And when that happens, th that's when the... Um, that's when your personal awakening happens because you have to be centered in your true self in the observer in order to have that perspective. And when you do that, th you have just woken up. In other words, you've noticed that you, your mind is not doing what you want and you've noticed what the mind is doing without your permission and you pull it back. And in those two things, there is, you've re-centered on the observer, your true self, and your willpower is strengthened because you've pulled your mind back. And that's the cycle. You know, people get upset because they feel like they're chasing their mind all the time. But in, in reality, there's no such thing as bad meditating in this regard. You're, you know, like some days your mind is very active and agitated and it's running all over the place. And it's, it's like a, a child that's having a tantrum. Some days the, children, the child is very well behaved and other days they, it, they aren't. And you just accept that as part of the, it's just the, the practice of meditation. Um, there is no, I chased my mind a lot, so it was a bad meditation. No, it's, no, it's like going to the gym. Every time you catch it and pull it back, that's a repetition. You get a little stronger. Your mind gets a little more obedient. It's not a bad thing. So, but when that happens, as you develop that in that thought awareness, then you are given the privilege of choice.